ASI progressing beyond AGI, a key part of it is infrastructure enablement. And a very key part of our technology offering is the Linjin cluster. It's able to cluster together 100,000 GPUs and to perform uh, all these resources connected together to perform a single task. So you're able to iterate your models and train your foundation models faster and more efficiently. The challenge is so that because GPU failure rates are you know, much higher, and then when you have all these resources are interconnected together to perform a single task, any failure of a single node could potentially impact and suspend your basically training. Linjin cluster is able to do is not only provide um, cluster communication for effective uh, training, but also proactively on predict 98% of the different failure patterns and proactively uh, perform maintenance so that the effective training time will be 99% uh, percent of the overall um, percentage of your resources. Enable this type of uh, efficient use of your underlying GPU resources is what makes these um, iteration of models faster. And also at the same time, we talked about in the age of AI model sort of a, a building, you need a high performance parallel file system, a file system that can span tens of terabytes, and yet all of the data has to be distributed to be able to um, avoid any hotspot. And also the file metadata as well as the file handles are evenly distributed to provide parallel file access. And this is our cloud parallel file system or CPFS connecting with our Linjin cluster to provide um, high performance tier for our storage file access. And this year we also announced that we will incorporate um, Elastic File Client, which is basically utilizing the local SSD connecting closest to the GPU as a single distributed cache environment for our highest tier or most um, frequently accessed data. Then with uh, parallel file system being expanded to as much as 20 terabytes uh, being the high performance storage tier. And then the rest of the data can reside on object storage. All of this three tier of data can reside and host it in one single file namespace. So the combination of storage compute will allow these um, AI model trainings to iterate faster and to be able to, to use all these resources more efficiently. But it's not all just about model training. It's also about inferencing, also about post-training, such as um, a reinforced learning. And all this is possible because, um, for example, container services that can essentially manage all these resources and ser servicely be able to provision, just in time, provision the needed CPU and GPU and memory to provide inferencing or reinforced training capabilities. So the entire dynamic um, composable infrastructure will be flexible enough for us to be able to host different type of AI workloads. I think these type of infrastructure products are what makes um, the roadmap to ASI possible. So first of all, I think I talked about Linjin being a supercomputing cluster and we're making available not only um, in China, but also overseas, for example, Singapore and Germany and parts of America continent. These supercomputing uh, clusters will be made available, but also in addition, uh, we're also proliferating our um, elastic compute or uh, graphic server instance, um, so that it will be closely located to your own workload in different AZs around the world. But in terms of vertical um, integration, uh, all of our past layer, for example, Pi, which is platform for AI, incorporates all of the infrastructure capabilities. And by using this Pi, you can seamlessly um, tune your uh, training workload under Pi Prime, whether your uh, framework is uh, uh, MOE or Fuse or Reinforced Learning. And also you can use this Pi platform to optimize your inference, whether you want a better customer experience by um, minimizing the time to first token or minimize the average um, time to output token, or you want to just uh, have an aggregate throughput. So all this can be dynamic, dynamically adjustable by using uh, Pi, for, especially for inference. And this Pi product completely encompasses the underlying infrastructure capabilities. And this is an example of how we're building the underlying storage compute network products and being 100% consumed by the past layer. And then if you think about 
model as a services, which is built on top of the, our past layer uh, using our AI model studio. And all these are will then fully consume Pi's capability in terms of fine tuning, training, or inferencing. So this, this stack is not only horizontally integrated for different types of scenarios and workloads, but also vertically integrated from model as a service or um, pass or uh, ICE infrastructure to provide ultimately the value to our customer. Regardless if the, your consumption point is model as a service or you decided to deploy your uh, machine learning or um, MI ops on the other pipe platform, or if you decided to buy bunch of infrastructure as a service and build your own platform. All these are flexible to our consumers for different consumption points. Um, but all these products working together in Symfony is sort of our AI platform to rapidly accelerate AI innovation across the world. So this is our 15 years of um, cloud computing. Build this uh, stack from the ground up all the way from the hardware in terms of CIPU, which is our cloud infrastructure processing unit. Um, this is our fifth generation of, uh, of this, this hardware type. So we have been you know, working towards um, getting all of these um, with each iteration to be more stable and uh, with higher performance and reliability. And build on the CIPU, we connect with, whether it's regardless of its CPU or GPU, um, to build our, basically, um, on our self-developed software stack uh, with storage, compute, and networking. And all these vertically integrated with software and hardware um, give us our customer best performance, cost performance. Um, and then in terms of our own product iteration, we work with industry leading such as Intel or AMD, always refreshing our power at the earliest time as possible. We work with them very closely on design their CPUs and next generation chip technology to make sure the integrated solution is right for our customer. For example, we were first to market in terms of mass GA, in terms of our ninth generation ECS, which is incorporating the latest um, and the greatest GPU from Intel, and then also from AMD. Now, as we just GA'd our ninth generation ECS, incorporating the AMD processors as well. And with each generation, you'll see massive performance increase anywhere between 20% to 40 plus percent. And also at the same time, you see the cost did not increase significantly. And if you look at our um, products SLA, you'll notice that our SA, SLAs are usually higher than the industry standard. If you think about just adding another nine at the end of it, but it's actually, you have to take one minus all these nines. You'll notice that our failure rate um, is significantly lower than our competitors. And all this is because we build our infrastructure to be more reliable, uh, to be always available to our customers. We track all these uh, components, failure rates. And if you look at single instance SLA or multi-zone SLAs, um, they provide really a more robust infrastructure overall to our customer. So higher performance, more robust and reliability, and also then lower cost. And we're more flexible in terms of our cost structure that you can have a monthly subscription service, which you can enjoy and almost a third off in terms of uh, comparing to pay as you go. At the same time, we are expanding globally, right? Today, we're in 29 regions and uh, uh, 91 availability zones, but we are expanding that quickly of the world uh, with additional uh, eight regions planned already and 33 availability zones are planned in the near future. So with that global expansion connected with one network, allow you to connect the world to China, to Asia Pacific, and allow Asia Pacific and China connect to the world. So if your workload uh, enjoys global sort of footprint and wanna uh, enjoy the same level of technology leadership um, to have a low cost, best cost performance, um, Alibaba Cloud is your choice. And that also the other thing beyond just the technology, I think it's our services. Uh, we will deliver services at a much faster response time and all of our customer problems um, are our problems. And the, basically the route from the um, first line of defense in terms of services to our development is we have a fast pass to be able to support our end customer. And this is very key as well. Our customer first isn't just join, you know, your working hours. It's really customer first all around the um, 24 by seven and working directly from developers to customers 
we're able to address all of our customers' need as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, um, we provide a technology platform that continually evolve, that will always be industry leading. At the same time, we provide a service as close to our customer's requirement as possible and taking into account the customer first um, into our de entire development and service process. So there are many, many products in terms of differentiation. It depends on who you ask. If you ask a, a database guy, he will tell you that uh, all of our database now are serverless in terms of CPU and GPU, and that you can use SQL to invoke AI functions inside of the database. If you ask uh, um, a big data guy, he will tell you about revolutionized a uh, data intelligence with AI, and all of our um, big data compute engines now incorporating AI functions, and also they're able to both process the uh, structured data as well as semi-structured data and also the uh, unstructured data. Um, if you ask our network guys, they will talk about, uh, we've been building out network around the world with network connectivity, and we're using zero technology to be able to seamlessly and really fast at a sub-second level to probe our network connectivity and route to accordingly to our uh, network in order to maintain a highly robust enterprise cross-region, cross-AZ, and cross-cloud uh, product, uh, products the network capability. Um, if you ask our compute guys, um, we will talk about, of course, one is our Linjuin cluster being a um, high-performance supercomputing cluster. Uh, we will talk about, which I mentioned before, the ninth generation ECS. We will talk about our total availability and robustness, uh, as well as our um, U2 instance, which basically provides a universal instance that be able to host all your tier two non-compute intensive applications at lowest cost possible. If you ask our storage guys, we will talk about we're moving the world. Well, first for the first time ever on object storage, we are um, releasing a different bucket type called vector bucket. And because we wanted to be able to embed all the object and storing in vector bucket so that you can easily search those contents uh, across massive trillions of objects and find the content that you're looking for. Our object storage are become more content aware uh, using AI technology that you can just basically um, search for the content by you know the description of the content. If you don't know what to search, we can actually generate keywords for you. And we do a, a content discovery of your object storage. At the same time, any new objects come in, then we can basically in interpret these contents and alert you when a new type of contents um, arrive in your object storage. So fundamentally, changing object storage from just storing objects but to a knowledge base for AI agents. So if you ask about our containers or Kubernetes, we're making our orchestration layer more uh, smooth. We're giving our customers a single pane of view across different resources across the world, whether you're using Linjuin cluster or using ECS, whether you're in China or in Singapore, in Hong Kong, et cetera, we'll give you a single pane of glass view of all your resources and you can provision your tasks um, to your resources accordingly. You can centrally manage all of that and you can integrate it with all these different um, maintenance sort of events to your container orchestration and automatically do all sorts of uh, um, proactive maintenance on your task-oriented Kubernetes management. I think all of these are competitive edges and this is just the, an edge of 300 some products that we have to offer. I think we're continuing to lead um, continue to innovate based on real customer requirements and provide real value to our customers across the board. And I think the beautiful thing about Alibaba Cloud is that products just integrates together horizontally and vertically. We don't have products that has to completely build its entire stack vertically. Um, that is inefficient in our view. And we are customer-driven um, innovation. Um, basically, I tell people that we have everything you need and nothing you don't. And that's basically, in my opinion, this year's product refreshment, and we'll continue to innovate throughout the year.